Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Hello, you're watching another episode of Oregon Voters Digest. My name is Teresa Griffin Kennedy, and I am here today with my husband, Don Dupay. I'm going to be hosting the first 15 minutes of the show. And basically today's show is going to be a little different. We're going to be responding to an allegation made by uh, another individual who also has a cable access television show here at Open Signal. And his name is Paul Stanford. July 15th, 2017, Paul Stanford aired his show, Cannabis Common Sense. And at the 5207 mark of his show, he made an allegation against my husband, Don. So I'm going to read his statement verbatim. verbatim. He was discussing his recent legal problems and basically went on a kind of a meandering rant about how it has nothing to do with any mistakes he's made in his life and how it's all a conspiracy uh, by other people. He said, and I quote, uh, and this was from the televised program July 15th, you know, we were infiltrated by a fella named Don Dupe, who was a, is a, was a Portland police homicide detective. And he appeared on this show for a number of years before he came out against medical, against marijuana legalization. And we took him off the show, but he was a Portland police uh, uh, detective and he appears on other people's cable access shows sometimes. But he really illustrates the level that these people work with the police, the spies, the spook. It's really this secret government deep state that has targeted me. I am what is known as a targeted individual. I am being attacked on multiple levels. This was the statement that Paul Stanford made July 15th. And I can't begin to express how comical I found his rant. And it comes across as incredibly paranoid. I want to state, first of all, that I'm Don's wife and I'm here with my husband, and we're writers and authors, and we're incredibly busy with our writing projects. Um, my husband Don's been working on a novella for the past 18 months called Frank's Revenge After Midnight that will be published this year. I have two manuscripts I'm working on. Um, one is a collection of fiction, and it's called uh, Burnside Field Lizard and Collected Stories. Another is a collection of n personal narrative essays, and it's called, tentatively titled, um, We Learn to Live in That Castle Stories. Um, that's what we've been doing for the past, you know, few years. Um, number one, I think it's important to address the claims that Stanford has made because all of his allegations are false. Um, Don did not infiltrate Cannabis Common Sense TV show. He was asked by Paul Stanford to join the TV show as co-host, and he did co-host Cannabis Common Sense for approximately four and a half years. Don is a longtime supporter of medical marijuana and never at any time came out against legalization of medical marijuana. Don has not been affiliated with the Portland Police Bureau or any other law enforcement agency since his re resignation from the Portland Police Bureau in April of 1978. Um, we did a little research and uh, I found some sources on the internet, um, some articles. There was an article that I think it was written by uh, James Pitkin from Willamette Week. It yes. was written in 2007 about uh, Paul Stanford. It's called King Bong. And it details his history of fraud and his history of conning people out of thousands and thousands of dollars that goes back 25 and 30 years. Um, there's a section of the article that reads, the success of the Oregon Medical Marijuana Act in 1998 prompted Microsoft millionaire Bill McKinney to try to legalize dope in Washington state. In 1999, he gave Stanford $100,000 to start a campaign, but in a federal lawsuit filed in Portland the following year, he claimed $63,000 disappeared while in Stanford's hands. A judge found McKinney's claim was mostly right and in 2003 ordered Stanford to pay back $39,000, including $4,200 Stanford had allegedly spent on a Ford Thunderbird. Stanford says he never paid. Um, there's another section of that article that reads, McKinney, now a real estate developer in, in Silver City, uh, 
blasted Stanford in an email to Willamette Week. Now remember this this article was written in 2007 so that's 10 years ago. Basically Stanford is a thief, McKinney wrote. He makes a living taking advantage of drug reformers and stealing their money. There is some debate about whether Stanford is consciously a crook or if he is a sincere reformer who just can't separate his own personal interests from the interests of the organizations he works for. Either way he has a long history of deceit and betrayal. My husband, Don, was also used as a, as a source for that article, and this section of the article reads, Don Dupay, a marijuana advocate who worked at Stanford's clinic for a year starting in 2006, says chaos prevailed. He's, one step away from, he's always one step away from disaster, says Dupay, who lost a run for Multnomah County Sheriff in 2006. Bouncing payroll checks is one of the things that pissed me off. He's too unstable for me to be around. Now that was the quote from Don. Um, there's also the issue that if Don or I were in cahoots with any law enforcement agency, which we're not, trust me, why would Don have written an article? He wrote an editorial a couple of months ago called Liar, Liar, Badge on Fire about the current chief of police. So it stands to reason that if Don wrote that article, that editorial, um, and published it to his website, um, why would he do that if he was in if he was in cahoots with the Portland Police Bureau or the DEA or any other law enforcement agency? It does not. It's simply not logical. Um, he also wrote an, uh, an an article, an editorial called "Snake in the Grass" about his experiences. Don wrote this article about his experiences being. Um, uh, hassled by the DEA and having his home uh, broken into by the DEA. Um, and when it comes to the cable access show, Cannabis Common Sense, Paul Stanford didn't tell Don that he couldn't co-host the show because he had infiltrated Paul Stanford's program. Don had been, do you want to explain what happened that led to that? Well, I, uh, <clears throat> There were some problems with the DEA, and I called one of their agents, a bald-headed punk. Matthew... Whatever his name yeah. was, I don't remember now. But Matthew Petty. <clears throat> Matthew Petty. I called him a bald-headed punk because he was, and uh, <clears throat> after that, uh, Ann Whitty, who was Paul Stanford's attorney, suggested that uh, in a telephone call, I probably shouldn't come back to the show anymore because the DEA was mad at me, and now they would be looking unfavorably at Mr. Stanford. So. so basically what happened is the DEA was breathing fire down Paul Stanford's neck so instead of standing up for his supposed friend he um, had Ann Witte call Don and say Don you can't host the show anymore so it had nothing to do with Don being a double agent or a spy or anything like that. I'd also like to point out in, in uh, Paul Stanford's recent uh, program that he um, he uses some really interesting language here, which I found interesting. Um, he talks about uh, the deep state that has targeted him, and um, uh, he he talks about the po uh, these people work with the police, the spies, and the spooks. Now, I'm I'm curious what he means by spooks. Um, Paul Stanford has been accused of racism more than once, and to me that term is a little dubious. Mm -hmm. So maybe on his future episodes of Cannabis Common Sense, he can explain what he meant by spooks. Um, but I, I wanted to clear this up mm -hmm. um, because I don't appreciate anyone uh, casting aspersions on my husband's character and trying to um, accuse my husband of something he simply has not done. We are too busy with our writing. The, the bottom line is we couldn't care less about Paul Stanford or Cannabis Common Sense. I, I'm not interested in the mer medical marijuana movement. Um, I support people who need to use medical marijuana because it's necessary. It's not something I'm interested in. I can't even express how boring it is to me personally. Um, I'm interested in my writing, in interviewing writers and authors and poets and painters on this show when I'm able to host uh, the show. Those are my interests. You know, our interests are simply our, our, our writing and our lives. It has nothing to do with, you know, uh, Paul Stanford and his recent troubles with the law, which go back 30 years. So. I, I, I need to say that I haven't watched the cannabis show for several years, many years. And one of my spies told me that uh, my name had been mentioned by Paul Stanford and we needed to talk about that. 
It's interesting that he would see me as a deep state conspirator, conspirator when, in fact, I was raided by the DEA twice. Right. Um, and I was also arrested by the Portland police on a humbug charge. So. Which was later thrown out of court. Which was thrown out of court, and then. And then my articles uh, about uh, the chief of police being a liar, 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 badge on fire, I don't think that sets very well as a deep state problem for me. Yeah. Uh, the problem is Mr. Stanford is suffering uh, the results of years and years of bad karma, and uh, now he's to the point where he's seeing spooks. He's seeing George Soros is after him. Right, George all Soros of, is after him. You know, George all, Soros doesn't you know, even know who he is. All of a sudden, Don Dupe <laughs> is against him. Right, right. Uh, you know, I'm sorry, but that's just uh, a lot of when, nonsense. When you mentioned your spy, I need to clarify that. About two years ago, we were contacted by an, a man who is probably in his late 50s, early 60s, who is one of many people who had been conned by Paul Stanford. And this man new people and I believe he himself lost at least five or maybe twenty thousand dollars at the hands of Paul Stanford. Um, so we were contacted by this guy a couple of years ago out of the blue and it was right around the time Don published an editorial that he wrote um, about Paul Stanford which is available on his writing website which is called Why is Paul Stanford not being held accountable? So basically I just want to clarify that we're not interested in his show, we're not interested in his life, we're simply interested in our own life, and I find it hysterically funny that Paul Stanford thinks that Don or myself are trying to make his life difficult because it is simply not the case. Anyhow, that's my statement for today, and Bruce will take over the rest of the show. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. All kinds of stuff. Welcome back, folks, to the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Look like we're doing an addition right now. Teresa does such a good job, and Don did a good job, and, and here we got Fred on right now. Here's Fred, a future host, two co-hosts, by the way. <laughs> Welcome aboard, Fred. Thank you, Bruce. So we just thought we'd talk about some activities of, of late, if you will, some highlights and whatever. Maybe we'll begin right off the bat by uh, uh, by commending Don for, for b picking up that degree. The oldest person there, you were. That's right. Yeah, you there. Yeah, you, Don with Don Don Dupe. That's right. You know, he fact, was mentioned in the in yeah. the PSU program. Really, really was. And I was his tutor for about four of those you years. Were, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you, did you appreciate that? Wouldn't have done it without. Okay, fine, fine. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, congratulations, Don. Thank you, sir. That was very awesome. Very awesome Thank of you. you. Big time. Big time. I got well, my degree. You, you got the degree. Where's the deal? You, I, I thought you was going to bring me a certificate or something it's to show. Uh, it's framed at it's framed. home on the wall. Well, well, congratulations. You did a good job. Did a good job. Thank you. What, what I thought we'd do now is that See, we're just going to. Yeah, education. 
Education. Seek, seek education? <laughs> that's my mantra. Okay, okay, that's good. I like that. <laughs> Plus the fact he's got his jacket on. As you can see, he, mm -hmm. we also do a little outreach. In fact, uh, uh, Fred over here, he's got his he's got his piece on too. He's got his he got his cover on. He's got the Marine Corps deal. He's he's yeah. former Jarhead and and Don is Navy and I'm Marine Corps and whatever. And we're all reaching out to vets for that matter and making sure that uh, vets get their benefits. It's very very important. Please do that and thanks for serving, guys. Okay, good. So now what we're going to do, we're going to get down and kind of talk about some of the things that are kind of like on the table. We're just going to mm. kind of a grab, grab bag kind of a deal. I think some of the things that are, that are we won't go national on as far as the, the presidential race. The only thing I'll say about the presidential race is that I, I'm just tired of the fashion show on CNN and Fox. <laughs> <laughs> CNN, Fox, NBC, it's just a fashion show. You know, women are just, they're just, they're beautiful people. People. I mean, just beautiful people. But <laughs> hell, now, now I know, understand how fake news got to the table. Yeah. Because I don't hear the news. I mean, and, I don't even want to look because they, uh, with the fashions and whatever. It just, just blows your mind aspect of it. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, what do you think about it? You, you've been seeing, uh, you, have you, you, do, you, you look at the No, I rarely go to Fox. Okay, you go you to know, Fox. You know, I rarely do. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Fake news is everywhere. That's right. <laughs> well, that's the first time I had it, but anyway, that's, yeah. that's that point. Of. The other one, the other biggie that, that's out there, I'd like to get a little comments on it, bro. The juice is loose. Yeah. The juice is out now. You know, OJ is out. October 1st. Time. October 1st yeah. aspect of it. Well, that was a very interesting piece, though. I mean, the man have gotten that. Thirty some odd years, if you will, for the time. That was, thing. You know, that was, that such, was, that was insulting. That was such it was, BS. It, it really was big time, and the guy spent that nine years like that's yeah. ridiculous. You know what I mean? You know the the judge in that case. I hope wherever she's at, she's suffering some cancer or something. Just a worthless woman. What I always hated about it is the one of the guys that uh, accused O.J. Mm -hmm. was a lifelong criminal and a registered predatory sex offender. And I said, this shows you how far a white person will go when they hate black people. <laughs> because yeah. this guy that they took the word against O.J. Yes. You understand? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Has a penchant... For he said, I guess in court documents, he preferred women under 10 years old. You know, that's <laughs> wow. where... And this is a guy that used to testify. They gave him immunity because he had committed a crime from stealing the right, stuff right. Just from O.J. Just, just so to, just right. to file charges against uh, O.J., yeah. they give yeah. a registered yeah. sex offender, yeah. Yeah. a predatory yeah. sex offender, yeah. you understand? Yeah. A, a, basically a, a green light. And they took his word over O.J.'s. Yeah. You know, it's, and I said, that's man. That's got to be karma. No, it's not it's karma. karma. Let me tell you why. No. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Hey. No, no, okay, no. Don, give it up. Yeah, give it up. <laughs> give it up, Don. What when are you they, about when they found that Bronco, it had a body bag. No, it didn't. Yes, it did. No, it didn't. There was a body bag and a shovel. No, it didn't. Yes, yes, yes. And that tells me he was going to escape in that. No. That's what OJ no. intended to go to the airport with. I saw that bag. He wouldn't fit. No, exactly. Like the gloves. Exactly. You know, no, I, I've, I, actually I been doing, I've actually been doing some research lately, and there's a real theory about the uh, drug dealing um, aspect of, not, of, of, to do with the point. of the wife. The point is, Maybe. Right. OJ Simpson planned this, and somewhere up there in the hills is a grave that he was really? going to put her in. John, what? Yes, he was going to put what? Hey, listen, I'm a detective. I'm telling you what You're happened. You're a detective? We wow. don't know what happened. He, he, there was somewhere up there, there was a grave he was going to put her in. But what happened was there was only one grave. He intended, intended to kill one person. Hmm. Now she, she comes along with somebody else. Now he's screwed up. Now he kills two people. That throws the whole time in there. That's my understanding. Someone, someone didn't pay that drug bill. I, I, heard. I don't see how a man can run. I don't see how a man that can't, that can't run, and OJ couldn't run, well, could okay, is going to grab, is going to carry the dead weight yes. of a five foot seven, 135 pound woman to a grave. I mean, didn't stop him from killing two people. Well, I, that's why I don't he think he killed. Yeah. That, you're talking about something that's pretty aggressive. Yeah. Have you, ha, when's the last time you picked up a 135 pound woman? A long uh, time ago. A long time ago. <laughs> do you remember? You mean you wouldn't save this number? Do, do you remember what a, 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 a <laughs> five just, foot seven, yeah, imagine, yeah, yeah, yeah. five I, foot that's, seven, that's dead weight, long legs, all bloody. Mm. You're going to grab that and walk it what was it, about 100 yards, not even 100 yards, about 50 yards to your truck, 
and then you're gonna put her in there. You know, I think I think a lot of what a lot of why there's a grave that I they think, haven't found yet. I think a lot of why white people think that OJ did it is because when the t trial was being televised. Um, Marsha Clark, you know, blood matches defendant, matches defendant. You remember that? And, yeah. And I think that... You know how many good some... women get breast cancer every year and that woman's still alive? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. This is one of the reasons why some people have a hard time believing in God. Okay. Her and Chris Darden are sucking air. You know how many really good, decent people have died? Benefits. They're beneficial to the planet Earth beneficial to the community and these two people are still sucking air i know you know it's bad yeah when chris darden was here in portland some friends of mine wanted me to meet him i said no you know i i, really, I may end I, up going to prison i don't want to be <laughs> in the same room with him i really thought for years i really thought oj did it but i've been reading did. some some links and some sources and i'm not sure now because of a lot of, of the people. Drug, ah! because of the drug dealer and what what yeah. Linda said that the drug dealers cut it almost nearly decapitating people. Well, I don't know. To me, that's that's is, it was worthwhile looking into. But yeah. I've just looked at the physical aspect yeah. of, a, of a of a of a of a human being, and I'm like, you know, there wasn't there was never enough time to clean the blood up and hide everything as well. Right. But then this whole thing about his knees. I mean, it's like oh, you know, Michael can, Bodden can. said. The guy could barely yeah, yeah. walk, and you watch him walk. You, you I tell walk. people what, what, the other day when they were watching him walk into the, I said, look at how this guy is walking. You know, he, he hasn't had a total knee or nothing like that done. I said he he, he wasn't walking very well back in you know in, in the nineties. The, yeah. the, the other thing I got out yeah. of that whole deal was that, like you said, when he washed up at home and this that and the other, mm -hmm. they pulled every pot pipe out of that house oh, that's normal. and scraped it to oh, see yeah. if they could no, find normal. any 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 blood. Not more, but they did. Yeah. They took it. They didn't find anything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that was the only thing that got me. I mean I looked at it too. Baby uh, but but it, but it's kinda like divide the country again. You know, all of a sudden they say telling OJ, well mm -hmm. OJ, don't talk to anybody. Just go and just take it. Hey, there's no way in the world. OJ's gonna go out there and talk with his buddies. You know, know and, nobody wants to speak ill of the dead, but I've met in the last twenty years Probably about ten people, fifteen people that knew o, that knew OJ yeah. knew her, yeah. and one of the things that is common that everybody said about her was her attitude, how she treated people. I mean, she was nice to your friends, and she was probably nice usually to her husband. But if you weren't uh, what she felt was on your level, you know, I'm not trying to speak ill of the dead, but yeah. I'm like yeah. a personality like that, you don't know who she's pissed off. I did read that you don't she, know she had a Hispanic maid, and she or some kind of a maid that talked back to her and she slapped her full across the mm, face. Mm. Oh, I did gosh. read that. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of stories like that, but I'm not trying to speak of the dead, but no, I'm, no, I'm no. trying to say it's just a normal life. You got yeah. somebody like her, um, like OJ, who are in contact with lots of people. Yeah, yeah. You understand? Um, I've heard some people say OJ was a great guy. I've also heard people that met him that thought he was a snobby SOB. You yeah, know what I mean? I've heard that too. You, you just don't know how. <laughs> some, another human being. How, I mean, people like that who who meet so many yeah, people, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. And having to smile. And, and, you know, right. who, who do they rub the wrong yeah, way? Right. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, some yeah. guy could have dated her um, a week earlier yeah, or a month yeah, earlier yeah, and is yeah. upset that yeah. she doesn't want to date him yeah. again. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we. There's so many things we we don't you know we don't know, yeah. Yeah. and uh, the thing is what we do know is this. Physically, the guy would have to be a damn musician, I mean magician, mm -hmm. to be able to commit the crime, hide the evidence, in that frame of time that he had, and that's what to me it was always the timing. Well. I tell you, folks, that's why I wanted to bring this yeah. up. As you can see, there's a major divide. There's going to be a conversation for quite yeah. some time. And I hope people and just don't get heart attacks just thinking about it. <laughs> and I, I apologize ahead of time if I'm ever in the same room with that low life SOB Chris Darden. <laughs> I am definitely going to lose my professionalism. But right he's a day. brother. Oh, my God. Isn't he a brother? Isn't he black? He's oh, black, my isn't God. Isn't he a brother, a friend of yours? You, don't, you don't know this guy? Mm. Okay, all right, Fred. All right, I mean, Fred. what an insult to okay. humanity. Well, as you can see, we're going to have quite a discussion, so please don't don't yeah, don't get all excited about this. Stuff. Just continue to watch the Oregon Voters Digest. We got the news, boy. I tell you, we got the news. So well, how about this chief of police situation? Oh, that's why we got you okay, here. Okay, yeah. Chief, you remember that? You're the chief now. Come on now. Well, Talk about that. Give us, give us do, a little background on this stuff. Who do you support? I don't know. They don't. They they're not saying who the candidates are. Well, is not Mark DeLong running? running? I believe he was running. He would be the one I would Mark support. Mark DeLong is really a good guy. Mark DeLong. Now, is he still on the force? He's, a, he's in he's Gresham a on the force. He's a retired police officer, and he yeah. went to work for Gresham. So he's been he, a cop, he retired so, yeah. with Portland. Long, full, long full time. Pension. Well, 
<laughs> and went what to you, Gresham. What do you think about the list of people there on the on the panel? I mean, it's very interesting. Yeah. Who's on the panel? Who's on the panel? Oh gosh! Uh, there's a woman from Lentz, the Lentz Association. Yeah, Lentz right? Association. I think that's it's, good. Finally, it's a pretty broad. It's, it's Who represents yeah. the the black community? The, oh, they got Richard Brown on there. Which Richard, Brown. Richard Brown. Richard Brown's on there. That's very what about good. the Hispanic community? Oh, I forgot who. They got some people who are Hispanic. What about the Asian community? They got some Asian. What about the Chinese community? Well, what about the Bruce you know how, community? You know how Portland is. <laughs> what about but the no, Hose Digest? A, what about Don? I will say <laughs> I was I was impressed. I mean, I've seen these committees over years be yeah, developed yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they got um, Marsha, was it Maria Rubio is on there? But yeah. Um, there's a couple of people on there that I know that just shouldn't even be anywhere near is this that right, thing. Really? But most of this committee is very good. This is probably the best committee of this nature. You know what I'm talking about? I've seen the city put together. I'm kind of impressed. They have very good names on there, very the good people is, on there. The problem is, who are they? Who are they thinking about? Because yeah. I know that most people aren't really that happy with Marshman. You know. Well, you know, I think Marshman is doing a better job than he gets credit for. But I don't think, in the wake of things that happened yeah, before yeah. him, he's going to be tough. It, I mean, I don't think gonna he's going to be able to do it. But, yeah. but, but the thing is, what I don't like is they don't have people on there. And I talked about this on Facebook. They should have had Sam Sachs on there. I mean, Sam wants to be black so bad. They should have put him on there and mm. represented mm-hmm. the almost black folks. Mm-hmm. And then you could have put on um, that guy, in Gregory, was it McKelvey? Gregory McKelvey. I don't. I was absolutely I mean, yeah. blown yeah. away yeah. 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 that he or Jesse. Yeah, we're not put on yeah, that. Yeah, they yeah. would never put them on. Come that on, panel. No, well, no why couldn't they be on that? I panel? can understand Jesse because sometimes no. Jesse gets a little. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But McKelvey, but that, lately, some things that, happened. To him. That blew me away. I mean, McKelvey gets on my nut because he likes to, you know, partner up with violent people and yeah, gang members. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the guy's got a lot of young people that that he talks yeah, he to. Does, he does relate to. He, he is just he's very doing really good work. He's, he's very he's, inexperienced. Yeah. Hearts, hearts in the right place. Where's right. Darryl? Where's Darryl? Very that. inexperienced. And, and, and where, 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 they would where, never choose him. Th- this would be an excellent He's too young. Opportun- no, I was his age. I was his age when I was getting on committees like this. Mm-hmm. You, you understand know what I'm talking about? But you weren't heading Portland Resistance, which is a good organization, well, by the way. Well, hold it. The thing is, that's a very why you want him on there. The thing is, I'm, you take you compare him to J- him and Jesse. I mean, Jesse is a wild... I like He's Jesse. He's a wild card. He's a wild card. Uh, yeah, 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 <laughs> but, yeah, I like it. I, I but McKelvey it, yeah. is much... Much more, uh, you know, mature in this area. Yeah, legal mind too. Uh, you know what I mean? He's an excellent communicator. I would have, I would have expected Ted Wheeler or or some of those white folks on city council to want to give a guy like McKelvey some yeah. experience. Yeah. You hear something about? Yeah. Because I think he would benefit from it. Plus, he's got this constituency. See, mm-hmm. the thing is, most of the people on that committee don't have a constituency that is one tenth. Yeah. Of McKelvey. Of the issues that we talked about. Well, no, but I mean one tenth yeah. of of McKelvey's. I mean I was like I was really thinking thinking about this going, you know, everybody on here, okay, they they make their decisions and they do who are they talking to? All of my bet aren't talking to more than about fifty people unless they post something on their Facebook. Okay. But the thing is a guy like McKelvey All right, you he's made talking you, you, to you made, you made your point. Hundreds what, of people. Well what about Daryl Turner? Where is he in it? Where he is. He is. Yeah, Daryl's on it. Yeah, on it. Yeah, on it. I'm not too happy about that. Well, he's already. They've already picked it. Yeah, he's but I, mean, I, don't, I do not think that the union should have been involved picking their 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 boss. Huh? I, I don't like that. No, huh? I mean, I don't like that. I mean, when Donald Trump or Barack Obama or any president picks who's going to lead the army, do they go and ask the, the troops, "Hey, troops, which general should I pick?" <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I mean that. Right, I get your point. I mean yeah. the same thing with the FBI. I mean we're getting we're hiring a new FBI director. I guarantee you, the President Trump and just like Barack Obama wouldn't have done it either. Wouldn't have said let's poll the leaders of the FBI and see which FBI director no, they I think, want. I think, I think, no, I think Daryl is very important. He's kind of like the assistant yeah, chief. Yeah, I, I, I'm. He's like the assistant I think, chief. I think, I think it's important. I mean, he He's runs. He too. basically runs the police. Daryl yeah. should. The union, the police union, should not be on that committee. Oh no, they got to be on there. I mean, hey, he, he insisted. <laughs> I don't care that's if he the, insisted. If person, I was mayor, that's, that's I would have just sat there. Probably, that's the first person that I mean, probably said that. I mean, Daryl's got is. really cute I know dimples. You, you like, you like Daryl. I would have sat there and yeah, gone. Yeah, yeah, you like Daryl. You, you know like, what? You're you never like going to meet my woman you with them dimples. <laughs> just keep 
<laughs> insisting in front of me. The more you insist, now, the you know less was, likely you'll you know, meet you know, anyone you know I army. care about. He was army too. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, no, yeah, no. Yeah, guys got I don't some. think the yeah. union, the police union, should be on okay, there. Okay, we got that. I think it sends a wrong That's message to the Portland yeah, Daryl, police officers. Daryl's got to be on there, please. And by the way, and and Rick McKelvey said that the union shouldn't be able to pick their boss. Okay, I'm not sure. Obviously, well, I just, I mean, I agree with that too. Be making that statement, though. I, I mean, I, hey, come on. I was going to make that hey, statement. They're though. getting ready to name the next commandant in the Marine Corps. I guarantee you, they're not going to the young Marines going, hey, Marines, yeah. who do you want to be the commandant? They do. You know that. No, they you're don't. Right. Yeah, they do. No, come they on, don't. Right. Come on, Jeff. No, come they on, don't. Man. How long have you been in there? You know? <laughs> okay, let's get down. Let's get down to some more business aspect of it on that, as, that aspect of it. And by the way, I got to say, hey, I got to say kudos to Ted. I mean, hey, you know, he's OJ10. I know he's OJ on the job training right yes. now, and that's a tough nut. To be able to say I'm going to do OJT because he's got the whole thing. He's doing yeah. the whole thing. Well, no, he's and, probably and, one of the most capable. No, not, not yet. No, 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 no. He's OJT. He's still OJT. I mean, I'll be right up front with you. He did a great there. job at county. Did oh, a great yeah. job at treasury. What? what? You got to be kidding Ted me. Ted Wheeler. What, where'd you come from? Ted Wheeler. <laughs> uh, did great job at county. What happened? To, what happened? To, what? Huh? Wapato. What happened to Wapato? He had nothing to do with that. What do you mean? He was, exactly. he, he, he was chair. He was chair. No, that that was inflicted on him. Oh no, 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 no! Ain't no inflicted. He's chair. He was chair for four years. He could have solved that problem overnight. Now we're selling it for five million. Yeah. Jesus Christ, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it okay. Now that's the bigger issue. I'm surprised there's more people not upset about that. No, 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 no. I mean, I was, I mean, loss, I was yeah. watching that Brittany Justo show. Oh yeah. We were talking yeah, about eventually yeah. shutting down Inverness. Yeah, yeah. And switching everything to yeah, Wapato yeah, yeah, made total perfect. sense. It was perfect. It was perfect. It made total happened. sense. They could still do it. I know. They could still do it today. The problem is that would be a huge endeavor. It never happened. It would be a huge endeavor, and people would fight it. It's a jail. Yeah. People would fight it. It can't be that hard. You know, you know. By the way, they only built 500 beds to begin with. That was that was slated for 2,000 beds. Yeah. It's just a, it was just a natural and all the all the construction, all the all the all the infrastructure is always already there. Yeah, I still yeah. Re feel bad that we're not using Wapato though. Now that's you know that it's there and all. Yeah. For the yeah. to addressing this homeless issue. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, it's embarrassing. Oh, yeah. I, I, city you know, of Portland. Oh, yeah. Well, no, it's a county. It's owned by the county. Right. And okay. you know, the city of Portland gets blamed for it a lot, right. and the county keeps their mouth shut. Cause they don't want the people yelling at them, right. but really, it's the, 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 it's the county, mm -hmm. and the county. I wish the county would would rethink. Well, and all the, you know, well, think about it now. The, the county and the city just merged. You know that, don't you? They merged this last time around. Oh uh, no, they didn't. Yes, they did. How do they merge? Huh? Ted was a chair at one point. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they all they all buddy buddy. <laughs> I think we've had that happen three or four times They've already. They've already merged. They've already merged. I mean, uh, if you talk to Ted, you're already you're talking to Ted. Yeah, I th to Deborah, right? I think we that's already. Deborah, I think that's already happened two or three times. In come on, now, I am, come on, now they've already married. Yeah, <laughs> but I, but I'm, I'm going to be putting, I'm, I'm putting a proposal in. What? Huh? To, you, to, to get Wapato? Yeah, we're going to buy it. Oh, get good. I mean, I think it'd be a good idea. We're going to buy it. I mean, why not? Right. Yeah, well, citizens want to buy it. You know, we want to buy it for five million bucks. In fact, we did. We, someone just said we want five thousand homes. I mean, why can't you just let us let us have Wapato? We can do something yep. with it. And I know we can well, get, get those. What are, we gonna, what are you going to do with it? Well, immediately, the first thing we'll do, we're going to put homeless in there mm -hmm. overnight. I know some folks in the leadership in that particular arena that has no problem with it. The politics is keeping those folks from going on over there. Yeah. That's what it is. And Sorry. the money. And the money. But where are you okay. going to get the money to put the homeless in? No, don't worry about that. Don't worry about the that. value is there. You're the realtor. You're going to give me the appraisal on the deal, and we'll be able to get the money with the banks. No problem. We can raise that money overnight. Okay. I, I mean, the the, the, the the value of the property is more than five million bucks. Come on now. Yeah, but what can, how are you going to generate income with it? Don't worry about that. We got that squared away. Okay. We'll, we'll lease out some of the beds to the county, to the city. I mean, you know, to the feds. I, mean, uh, well, I see what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? No, no, it's there. Yeah. It's there. But anyway. I, I can see there's some way to, to maybe generate some income with it, but God, that's a great opportunity. I know the biggest problem is like what Ju Juicy said, Justo said. Yeah, was, Bernie, uh, yeah, he, he understood what was so far away, so far away from services and stuff. But, you know, people are tired of seeing homeless people in their parks, oh, yeah. in their oh, neighborhoods, yeah. in their alleys. Um, they're just tired. I mean, I was yeah. telling people, some people the other day, some people were upset about the folks that over in Lowerhurst yeah. who were upset with the camping in the park. And I go, you know, the last time I was at the park, you know, camping at the park, I, you know, it was, I was there at about what, 
one o'clock in the afternoon, got to watch a guy decide, you know, nature calls. Oh, yeah. And I don't know yeah. if my daughter... That's acceptable. I used to take my daughter to that part. That's acceptable. And I don't know... I used to take my daughter how, to that part, How comfortable too. I would be, no. you know, with my little three, four-year-old daughter when she was three or four. Yeah. Right. Taking her to that park and having some guy, you know, grown man, you know, basically exposing himself yeah. to relieve himself. Yeah. And, you know, these guys, if you live in, in Lowerhurst, you spend anywhere between 5000 to 25000 a year in property taxes just to live over there, not counting your any mortgages or anything like that. I think the tax dollars, I think people who, who live in Lowerhurst deserve a little bit more because guess what? Most of them, if they decided to walk across the street and go into Lowerhurst Park and take a leak or take a dump <laughs> in, their, in the park that they basically pay for, they would yeah. go to jail. <laughs> right. You understand? They would go to jail. Right. Well, you know? the biggest problem, and I'll do respect for it, the biggest problem is you, you, we're asking the homeless, what do you think we should do? You know, you know, the bottom line, you look at a situation and say, okay, this is how we're going to do this thing. Yeah. A lot of them are concerned about, well, what about my clothes? I get picked up, you know what I mean? And someone has to take care of my clothes. Those clothes are not fit to be worn. They don't wear those clothes when they get the hell out of jail. You know what I mean? They throw the shit up on the side. Excuse me. They, they throw that stuff on the side aspect of it. They could easily work a deal out with Goodwill, right? Go down mm -hmm. to Goodwill, yeah. give them a voucher, go down there and pick up the deal. And make sure you get the voucher and they get clothes, not booze. Right, you know? right. That's exactly what they would do. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then maybe have a shower or something that Goodwill would put there and they take a shower or something, a bath or whatever. But they're clean once they get out of jail. If, if, if Wapato worked as a homeless shelter, you'd have to hire staff to do number one to do the first thing would be screenings because you wouldn't want anyone actively drinking or using oh no they wouldn't do that yeah. and, and not, see, not and, and, and I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm a hard case no, no, I wouldn't no, want anybody no, drinking no, 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 whatever like that but no. sex offenders we got no, a huge population of sex offenders yep. who are homeless in yep. Portland yeah and most of these sex offenders that are homeless in Portland they're not from Oregon yep. right. they are sex offenders from other markets yep. that are escaping yep. The oppression yeah. that right. sex offenders face yeah. in that market, yeah. Yeah. and they're coming here, and, and they're, they're lying about yeah. their cr yeah. criminal yeah. history, and they're, yeah. and they're yeah. preying on young teenage and girls. Then, and then over and here, boys. we're over here. The issue, like one guy told me straight up, you know, we know. He says, I'm, I'm, "I came here from Florida. People know in Florida if you're homeless and you're a sex offender, Oregon is a safe place to go yeah. because cops don't bug you as much mm -hmm. as long as you mm -hmm. are along the I-5 corridor. Mm -hmm. right. When you're outside the I-5 corridor, they're mean. So in other words, they're saying the cops in Bend and LaGrand, and they're mean. <laughs> the cops in Portland and Salem and Eugene, they're f more friendly. Right, more so, accepting. More accepting. Yeah. In well, other words, they don't bother them as much. Yeah, right. but bottom line, their hands are tied. You know what I mean? There's, a, there's politics there, too. You got the mayor yeah. on one side, and then you got the police on one side. Yeah. And they're yeah. not going to do, oh, they're not going to, they're going to do, they're not going to bend, bend over, if you will, to do more for Ted at this point in time. Yeah. And maybe, Ted maybe needs to, he, the cops. he needs to make some changes because to he, the cops. Yeah, they have their hands are tied in a lot of yeah, respects, yeah, and they exactly. need to be allowed to do their job. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. it's just. But well, my point is that no one's there making the point about saying, "Okay, fine, this is what we're going to do." Well, I agree, but yeah. see, the problem is the way the media, you know, the Oregonian and the Willamette Week writes about homelessness is pathetic. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's why you know I tell people I can't wait till one of these guys have one of their kids right. harmed by one of these right. uh, people. Now, mm -hmm. not all people who are homeless. Are criminals, you know, that's the right. problem. We, I mean, I tell everybody about about half are straight up criminals, about right. half aren't road warriors, you know. And I said, the road ones that warriors. aren't services are being distracted and getting to them because we got these other people who don't deserve it. I don't believe a criminal deserves anything, they don't deserve anything, they deserve a jail cell. They deserve a pounding, whatever you want to call it. They don't deserve, <laughs> mm -hmm. they shouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. But you got people who are the working poor who have slid off on right. the side. You Lost got, the mental, job. You got right. mental health oh, issues, yeah. oh, people yeah. with mental oh, health yeah. issues, oh, okay? Yeah. And a lot of the services meant for them right. is being eaten up yeah. by people yeah, yeah, who are yeah. basically undesirables. Right. And I tell anybody, anybody who's a criminal, especially have a history of violent criminal, you're an undesirable. But you know, that's one major problem we're having on, on that whole issue at home. They're, they've not been vetted. They've not vetted that whole issue. Well, the cops are vetting them as no, they no, are no, approaching I, them. I said they've not done it. I mean, don't, don't be wrong. Mm -hmm. The cops know what's going on. Yeah. They, they know what to do and what not to do, aspect yeah. of it. But, not of, but, but they're in the position that they're, they're waiting to be told what to do. Right. But the entities over here that are supposed to be basically given, they're not giving them that information. Correct. Yeah. Okay, because I see these guys riding around in their cars and this, that, and the other, and say, hey, Bruce, man, but, you know, hey, we're just doing what we're told. What well, we're told. that's how I learned about how many sex offenders there were. I mean, I was literally, I've gone and God knows how many uh, drive right-alongs. Yeah. And I've talked to cops. Yeah. 
And I've heard, I've, I've had cops tell me they say, yeah, they're gonna lie and tell you who you know who they are. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You know, then we take him down to the justice center. Yeah. Right. You know, find out, yeah. who, find they out who they yeah. are. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And he and he goes, I, he says, and the state they're from. I say, aren't aren't they supposed to stay in the state they're yeah. from when they're registered? Or he says, Fred, we when a sex offender leaves our state. We don't go asking for them to come back. No, no, no. Fred, we, just, we, we nobody. Give them a ticket. We give them a right. ticket out of town. Yeah, nobody. Every, every goes, city is doing the same goes, thing. We get some of these these high level predatory sex offenders <laughs> who you know can't make it oh, yeah. in the market that they've yeah. offended in. Yeah. So they come out here, right? That state does not care. Yeah. Right. They, they're not going to do an extradition for them unless there's a pending, you know, case. Right. They're right. not going to do a, you know, an extradition for them. They're our problem, right. you know, when they're here. And like I told people, I said those guys—they're eating up food for oh, people yeah. who are oh, yeah. that oh, we yeah. we set aside yeah. for hardworking people yeah. Yeah. who can't afford yeah. a place to live. Yeah. We got people out there who are living in their cars because they can afford rent, yeah. and I think but they can't afford the money that's right. to pay up front that's right. to get into a home. I think there's probably also the element of um, those 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 offenders coming to Oregon because. Um, they want to reoffend. It's 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 easy pickings over here. We have because our cops because we are, have so many homeless teenagers on exactly. the streets. Exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah, and they want yeah. those homeless kids. They want homeless girls and homeless boys. What I keep hearing over and over is how nice when I talk because I've talk, probably talked to about a hundred or more um, homeless people. You know, and some of these guys I've filmed over the last six months. You know, just talking to them, wanting to know where you're from, why you're, why you're here. Yeah, why are you doing with And uh, the, a couple of them, after a while, they don't always admit it. I've gotten a couple who admit that they were sex offenders. You know, I've gotten a couple. But the thing is, whether they're sex offenders or not, how often they say cops in Portland are much nicer sure. than where I'm from. Sure. You know, or where, where, where I've been. Right. You know, cops don't hassle you as much. Um, you know, people are more giving here. Sure. And I go, you know, they're just taking a lot of these people. I'm not talking about the hardworking people. I'm not talking about the mentally uh, challenged people, but the criminals. And there is a strong pop, a strong, a, a sizable population oh, sure. of criminals sure. yeah. in that group. Yeah. They're taking advantage of us. And then we get the drug users, and that brings crime too. Right. So think about it. If you're drug dealing, uh, we call a sex offending SOB from Texas, is it better to be in Dallas? And be a drug dealing, sex offending SOB in Dallas, or to come to Portland, Oregon, right. deal your drugs, be a sex offender. Right. You, you understand? I mean, these guys that are out there that are sleeping in our parks, oh, yeah. that we take our kids to, oh, yeah. not all of them are nice people. Mm -hmm. right. Not all of them are nice. Well, then, again, we, we're talking about this particular issue, but at the same time, again, you got Ted's got to make that decision. It's going to be interesting to see who's going to be selected as chief. Yeah. And then what is his role going to be? Is he going to be mayor? Is he going to be the guy calling the shots? Or if it's going to go it's going right in front with him. I mean, Daryl's pretty well made the, I mean, the unions have already made the statement who they wanted right off the bat. They've made that statement. Well, that guy would be the first guy off the list. No, but who I'm just is, saying. Who is it? Whoever it is, I don't know, know who it is. That that I don't need uh, to know. No, who's, who's the guy that, they, that, 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 that uh, Ted has now? Marshman? Yeah, Marshman. They, they made, they yeah. made the point. Oh, about, yeah, yeah. yeah, they, they, yeah. They, they made that point right away. Hey, he's the best guy. You can't get rid of him. No, I'd keep Marshman for other reasons, but I wouldn't keep him because uh, the Portland police uh, said so. I think he's a great cop. I think he's a great community guy. Assistant chief, maybe? Uh, what, Marshman? No, I think he's been, he's what been great. What I've heard about Marshman mm -hmm. um, yeah, from some people that, that really know um, is that he's not very well liked among the rank and file at all. No, but that's, that's not. But that's not I, I, that, That's not what I've heard. No, that's not what I've heard. But I will say I've this. Heard from other people. I will, I will, I will just people. say this. Since Derek Foxworth, who has been a better cop? Matter of fact, uh, since two, in the last thirty years, who's been a better police chief? I mean, I mean. Well, well, number one, I think, the whole, I think the whole Derek what, Foxworth thing was ridiculous oh, because he ridiculous. never should have been fired. Should have never been fired. Yeah, and it but, was completely racist. But, but the thing is with, uh, I mean, I can't think of anybody. I mean, Kroger? Come on. Yeah, I know, I know. You understand? Because when he came to Sizer? Portland, all he did was, was make Portland Police Bureau more militarized than Correct. it was before. Correct. And, uh, yeah, Kro he didn't do very much. Yeah, did. I mean, I think Marshman is, is, is a breath of fresh air. Um I'm not saying that it's not time to change. You, and up until um, Chief Moose, we used to only have, you know, chiefs for two or three years, I know. and they're out. Mm -hmm. Then Chief yeah. Moose came in and decided he wanted to make it a 20-year commitment till he got his behind out of here. Thank God. But um, guess who's back in town? He is. 
Moose is? And Moose and his wife. Did they, they, they move here? No. Nope. Good. They're back in town. Well, hopefully they they, leave, they leave soon. <laughs> don't you look at Hopefully they book? leave right. soon. <laughs> For a visit, I guess. Moose I, I don't know. And his wife are both back in town. Hopefully that's, that's they're back nice. in town. They're, they're, they're visiting they're family town, and friends. How are you doing, Charles? Come on the show. No, no you don't want Charles on the show. Is he on the panel? You don't want Charles. Hey, I mean, hey, this guy's got background. He's written books. He's written books. Give me a break. I mean, she's a lawyer. They're in town. Could be that. When they're looking for a new chief. That's what I'm saying. Could be. That could be. Oh, wow. Oh, did you miss that? I missed that. Wow. Oh, my God. If Ted Wheeler is talking to Moose about chief, that's my choice. We're going to end up with a clan member for sure. I remember Moose way back when he's he's been the only chief been on my show for, for quite some time yeah. and he was he was an awesome awesome kind of a guy how you doing how you doing i totally disagree oh, good guy i totally disagree you like this guy no he'll make you not even a little bit he'll give you committees <laughs> not even a little bit put you on a committee or something or whatever no <laughs> okay no. It, 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 it offends me that his, him and his wife are back in portland okay okay, okay. Let, let's talk about the, let's talk about the, our little protesting groups we got out there what do you think about our protesting look like things have quite quieted down a bit if you will yeah, yeah a it's little, little bit. quiet down i mean how, yeah. how's downtown right now it, it looks pretty good tired, yeah. Bruce. Huh? well you know Jess, <laughs> they're all tired. You know, jesse swansford doesn't live in portland anymore no, well, jesse doesn't live right. in yeah Wednesday. and then gregory you know graduated from, from college finally <laughs> mm -hmm. so no no he, he didn't graduate from he didn't college graduate? he graduated from law school from law school he law graduated school. from college a few years yeah, ago so now he's probably busy now on, i graduated on, from law on, school uh, on his bar he can't take a chance of getting arrested while he's trying to pass the bar <laughs> so you know we're gonna, it's gonna be quiet for a little bit. You think he's gonna run for office? I mean, he should. What, what do you think? Oh, Gregory should. Absolutely. When he gets a little older, he's too yeah. young for right now. I, I agree. That's why Kim? I'm surprised Ted didn't put him on that committee. Ah, okay. I thought it would have been a great. Well, guess what? They don't. They don't. They don't jail. They don't I, jail. I'll tell you well, why no, they, he didn't. He didn't do it because it would have pissed off people at PPB. That's why. Well, he didn't so do what? It. So, yeah, so but, yeah, what? Yeah, but, yeah, exactly. But, yeah, but, 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 but Ted's making that decision. You know what I mean? But I don't think he wants to offend anyone at PPB. because no, I, I think he's a little intimidated by that. He should not right? be. Right? You know, he should. But he is. But you know, man's Let's the mayor. Face it. He's the mayor. He's the he, mayor. He should not be. This is, I mean, I like Ted. I don't want to come across <laughs> I don't like Ted, but. You know, that's one of the reasons why it's hard for me to fight, I mean, not fight, but vote for somebody I don't think's ever been in a fight. I mean, I was telling some people the other day, I bet Ted Wheeler <laughs> has never been, like, in a real fight, fight in his whole life. A physical fight? Like a physical fight. Come on. Like combat. Like, like combat. Wasn't he in the service? Wasn't he in the... He no, in the, he wasn't in the service. I know he wasn't in the Marine Corps. No, no. No, because you, get, you can't be worried about people like the Portland Police Bureau being pissed off at you doing what you think is right for the city. Yeah. I mean, they work for really the city. Do you really think he's going to go up against some of those, some of those powerful sergeants and lieutenants he's, and captains? Well, what's powerful? They're he's powerful because he, he allows them to keep their job. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? He, they are powerful. What did you just say? You said you said you don't think he's maker. ever been in a fight. That's what right? I'm talking about. That's okay. why he's allowing them to keep their job. The guy, if a guy, if man, some man, sergeant come on now. Come from, come that worked for me in the Fred, Portland no, Police on, is going to tell me they're going to cause hell because they don't like a decision I make. I'm telling them, call your wife and tell you, don't let your ass come to work tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm going to hold her accountable. But they're probably not going to tell anybody anything before they do what they want to do. And if I felt they were doing something, I'd <laughs> knock on the door and say, woman, you let your man come to work again. I'm going to come here and give you a good old-fashioned Muhammad Ali oh, <laughs> tongue lashing. <laughs> Tongue lashing. Fred should go for those, no, for those positions. these right? people. Fred, no, 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 no. Fred, come on, Fred. Let's, these, let's talk no, to you. No, no, I know you're getting upset at what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to communicate. What I'm trying to communicate he's is this. He's the mayor. He's OJT. He's the mayor. He's OJT. He's the mayor. He's elected mayor. by the people. Yeah, but he, he, he's supposed to do what he thinks is best for the people. And if somebody that worked for the city disagrees, mm -hmm. well, that's too bad. He has the power of transfer. If you know I don't I mean? like what it's you're saying, bad. Captain, there you go. tomorrow you're downtown. That's right. It, on the telephone it, before right, to you. Right, but right, how right. often no. does that happen? Not very not often. Enough. You know why? It because used to happen. Do you remember, you remember how the, the uh, uh, Bud Clark fired the first police chief he had? Oh, yeah. right, but see, you remember that? But remember that's that different. And I'll tell yeah. you why. Why is it different? It's All different. Right, I'll tell you why. Because up, one I time, know here. Bud Clark. Bud Clark was a family friend. His daughter Rachel and I grew up together. Bud Clark today is a tougher person in every respect than Ted Wheeler. 
Oh, yeah. Well, but Clark's a Marine, but yeah, Clark's right. been in fights. Right. And when sergeants <laughs> yeah, yeah, and lieutenants yeah, yeah, yeah. So he didn't and have, chiefs he didn't have tried to push him around, all right, guys. what happened to them? All right, he enough. fired Jim he, Davis. He didn't have a problem firing Jim Davis. All right, enough. And, and, enough, and it wasn't enough, just Jim Davis. Enough, he informed enough. a few other people uh, you, for Marine, the Portland police hey, that they may, want to re, they may want to retire. Hold on, hold on right, for a minute. Right. Hold, hold on for a minute. Hold uh -huh. on for a minute. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, since we're already on the subject of this. So how do you, okay one to ten how do you how do you how do you rate uh, Ted? So far, not you, not you. Okay, start with you. Me, okay. One to ten. I think he's highly intelligent. I think he's really competent in a lot of ways. I think the Portland Police Bureau is going to be his biggest problem and his biggest issue. I think he's intimidated by the cops in the upper command. That's what I think. Okay, what, that's what, what I think. Uh, Maybe I'm wrong, but that's what okay. I think. And what do you think? This, what his solution should be in regards to his position on the on the cop? He needs good advisors. Mm -hmm. he, needs, advisors. he needs good advisors that know police work that have a history with police work. But he got four commissioners. <laughs> he got four commissioners there sitting there for one. Yeah, yeah, they got their own committees. They don't really have any experience yeah. with law enforcement. Yeah. He needs somebody that can tell him about police culture. Mm -hmm. That can can show him how to communicate with cops. Um, yeah. Okay. He, he needs good advisors, okay. and I don't one think. One to ten. What do you, how do you how do you rate him? How do you rate him as question? being mayor? How, how do you Ted rate Mueller. him as being? How do you rate him as being mayor right now? One to ten. One, one to ten. Ten one is to the ten. high. Six and a half. Six and a half. Six and a half. Yeah. Don, you're the <laughs> cop. Uh, I think that he's over his head in what he's doing. I think that the on-the-job training that you talk about is going to be uh, really tough on him. Mm. because he does not control the police department and he doesn't know how. Okay. I would agree with and that. And until somebody decides to control the police department, mm -hmm. then the police department will run the city. Mm -hmm. I don't think Wheeler's got the balls to do that. So your your point is that the, 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 uh, the union is still, police department is still running the, the city? The union still runs the city. Okay, okay, and one to ten. One to ten. One to ten. I don't know. Go back and start over again. <laughs> Huh? One to I ten. Think he's one to ten. Give me seven. Seven. seven? He's, a, he's a seven. Oh, you give him a seven. Oh, you, <laughs> give, seven. Seven. Hey, she, you, you, yeah. you gave him more than okay. six and a half. She gave him six and a half. You give him seven. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Come on. I what are you doing? Eight. I think he's a solid eight. Why are you doing eight before you say? I mean, give me the explanation first. I give us. I give him a solid eight. I, as a mayor, I think he's doing very good so far. I mean, I don't like what he did on rent control and stuff like that. I think that was just. That was just stupid. I agree with that. That was racist. That was wrong. Yeah. But as uh, overall, he's doing fine. And the only thing I am worried about with him with the police at all is kind of what we've been talking about here, because I've been hearing this from other people, that, you know, the police union is pushing them around. Right. And I just do not believe in any elected official being pushed around by any employee, period. I think they should listen to them. I think they should be mindful of them. And, and, and of course, respect their service, because it is a service. But at the bottom of at the end of the day, they're elected to lead and make a decision representing the, the values of the people of Portland. We've got enough people we elect right now who make decisions every day that are not based on the values of the people they elected them. Right. Sure. And, and I'm just done with it. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and, and I hope that, um, that you know, to, to me that's where he needs to improve. If that's an issue, he needs to get over it. Um, no, most of the, our best mayors, the mayors that we look back and we like the most, including, well, I'm not going to say we like the most, but Goldschmidt, what I'm saying is they all knew how to handle the police. Right. And they all right. de dealt with the Portland police from a position of strength. Mm -hmm. There is only one right. chief. There's only one mayor. There's only one, you know, right, right, the buck right, stops right, with right, me. Right, right, right. Now I'm going to listen to you. Right. I'm not Who saying. Who is that? Well, no, that's all, all, generally all, speaking. all. Generally speaking, the, uh, the best mayors, that's how they approach the police. Okay. Vera Katz. The uh, only person Vera Katz let push her around was, was Chief Moose. And the only reason she he, he got away with it is every time she came close to giving him what he deserved, he'd say, if you do it, I'm going to hold a press conference and talk about how racist you are. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I would agree with that because I saw her once in uh, Delfina's back in 1992 and she was being interviewed by a journalist and, man, she was so in charge. And the guy was apologizing and begging for an interview and she I, was just, she was in charge. When I ran for office the last time, I got to see her, spend some good time with her talking about all the great work she did fighting gangs when mm -hmm. she was mayor. She gave me like an hour and a half, two hours of her mm -hmm. time. And we were at this coffee shop in the park blocks, not Starbucks, but one close to there. Mm -hmm. And we we're sitting at a table, little old woman, I think she's right. like 80. Keep going now, we gotta sit, get to Sitting at the end of the table, and she's commanding, not just me, Fred sit here, but as people right. were walking by, hey, can't you understand that I'm not as big as you? 
why did you bump an old lady like me? Would you stand away a little bit? I mean, she was like yeah. in charge. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but she, but health wise, she wasn't doing very well. But spirit, mm -hmm. very strong. But the, yeah. what I'm getting to is the whole time I've ever known Vera, uh, the buck always stopped with her. Mm -hmm. She was always the boss. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much how you have to be when you're the mayor or, to me, a city commissioner. Okay. That's when enough. you're dealing with that's your enough. people. You got eight. You said seven, six and a half, right? Six and a half. Okay, fine, fine. <laughs> yeah, solid eight. I think you're being. Okay. All right, good. Okay. And then the last thing I want to want to maybe throw out on the table, but Ron Hearn is in back in town. Ron Hearn mm -hmm. is back okay. here in town. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm glad he's back at the table, you know. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, he should run for office. Beforehand, he didn't run. He should have ran that first time around. They wouldn't have taken him out of this, this city because that's one of the problems with reference to leadership in the black community. What happens is that they'll, they'll pick him, maybe have them run for state representative, get him out of town, you got me? Mm -hmm. Or if not that, they'll create a program, if you will, they take a national. Well, mm -hmm. he's back now, and he's still very much involved in the Head Start aspect of it. And then uh, he, he just had a meeting with, uh, well, well it, was, it wasn't 200 black men. It was just a group of uh, people, m majority of which were black, and he made certain demands about it, which I thought was interesting. He wanted 5,000 5, housing for black folks, mm -hmm. and, he, and he, wanted, uh, he wanted to do the other thing about the kids, and he wanted Jefferson High School, he wanted them to tear that down, et cetera, et cetera. But those are the two major ones, because especially the, the, the bond thing was over. I mean, I wish yeah. he had jumped up beforehand. But like I said, things happen. But the fact <laughs> he is back in town, and uh, I, I really appreciate him being at the table aspect of it. You gotta get more young folks involved in the process. He's a tough, smart leader of color, and we need him yeah, in Portland. Well, okay, good, good. You know? what, do you, what do you think, Don? I don't think we need him in Portland. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't know him. You don't know him? Okay, good. What do you I don't, know? I don't think we need him in Portland. Why is that? Oh, I don't want to get into all the other things, but I, I'll just say this. What, your average person, black or white, what has Ron done in, in black leadership that, um, has touched you. Well, maybe he's changed. I mean, maybe when I changed, when I think Fred. of Matt maybe, Dishman, maybe, maybe I can think of something that to this day touches me. I got one minute. When I Come think on, of, real quick, uh, real quick. Of, of, of um, Dr. Run think, I can think of three or four things that Dr. Run think did that touches me, touches Ron, touches everybody. When I think about Ron, I can't think of anything that was successful that has, that has touched the people of Portland. But remember, you, you, you remember his name, so I mean, he's done something. Well, he's got I remember it. Charles Manson's name, too. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. You know, you would, and you, Ross Barnett. You, you couldn't come. You, Ross Barnett, I remember oh, his name. Ross Barnett. <laughs> head, head Klan member. Oh. <laughs> Mississippi. There's nah, a lot of names that are not mean compare, anything. You wouldn't compare Ron with Mississippi. No, I wouldn't right. compare him to Come on now. No, yeah, no, no, no. Let's I be fair to I describe. would not compare him to a Klan member, okay. but I will just say in general. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm 52 years old. I grew up here. I don't. There's nothing he's done that I feel. Okay, okay. Well, hey, look. Look like we've had a very exciting time. We, we've made some predictions. It'll be interesting. And I'm gonna, I've got a prize for whoever, whoever gets the prize. Okay. And, you know, real, real, okay? We can find him with that, please? Mm -hmm. Thanks very much, folks. It's been just great. All right? All right, Sheriff, <laughs> take care. Freddie, mm -hmm. take care. Teresa, take care. Uh, and you folks, hey, vote next time around, please. We need, we need leadership. Have a good one. Take care. We'll see you next week. <laughs>